What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Right here behind me we have our super cheap turbo Civic build. If you guys haven't been following along, this is a car we picked up a couple months back for $500. We did a manual swap, got it on Honda S300, and then started to build the cheapest possible turbo kit that we could put together. And so far, everything has been working out good. So we're gonna carry on with the theme of this build and I'm gonna try to put together the cheapest possible water methanol injection system. Now before we get started, I do wanna say, by no means is this the proper way to do it, but I wanna see if it can be done and I wanna see how cheap we can do it and if it's effective. So let's get through the intro and jump right into today's video. Now that we've gotten through the intro, I want to give you guys a quick rundown on our plan. But before we do that, I just want to reiterate the fact that this is not the proper way to do this. If you guys want to see the proper way to set up a very nice and very clean water methanol injection system, make sure to go back on the channel under the GTO playlist. We have a couple different videos on water meth injection that we set up on our ProCharge GTO. It is actually a triple nozzle setup and it has been working really good. I've been really happy with that setup. So if you guys want to do it the proper way and have it come out nice and clean and pretty much bulletproof, make sure to go back on the channel and check out the GTO playlist. But today we're gonna to be doing this as cheap and as bare bones as physically possible. So as I already mentioned, this car is on a Honda S300 and that's what we're gonna be using to control when the water methanol is actually being sprayed. Now the way our system is gonna be set up it is gonna be a lower pressure system and that is because we're gonna be using our factory washer tank with the factory windshield washer pump and we're gonna be controlling all that through the Honda. Once the engine meets the parameters that we have set up in the Honda, the car will begin to spray. We will be running a relay just to make sure that we don't hurt our ECU, but that's what the system's gonna consist of. So let's get some tools out get set up and get to work. So we're gonna be tapping into our AC output, which is pin A15, which is right here. Before we go crazy, I'm just gonna cut it at our adapter instead of messing with the car's harness because I can get another adapter for 20 bucks if we mess it up. So I'm gonna cut it here, we'll test, make sure that it does what we need it to do, and then we'll go from there and start wiring this thing. All right, we've got our voltmeter set up so that we can test and make sure we're getting the output that we need. So now that we have our voltmeter hooked up to the battery and to the ECU, I can go in here under online, go down to test outputs. We're gonna select this top one, test AC clutch output. When we click it, we should see a negative voltage at our meter because I have the positive lead down at the ECU and I have the black lead on the positive of the battery. It just happened to be how I hooked it up. But let's go ahead and hit test output. And we do have negative 12 volts. So 12 volts, it's just reading reversed. So like I showed you guys, we decided to use our AC output. Now I ran it with a couple different plugs here so that if we decide to add AC back to this car in the future, all we have to do is unplug our meth system, plug that in, and we can switch that to a different output very easily. And then we ran that wire out into the engine bay and we're gonna be using this. It is a ground signal. So we'll be using that to trigger our relay. You should always use a relay between a pump or any kind of uh, draw and the ECU so we don't fry the ECU. So we'll mount this relay down tucked in there somewhere and we'll have to run battery power to the relay. And then when it's engaged, it'll come out of the relay over to our pump. Now I am using a 40 amp relay so that if we decide to upgrade our pump in the future, we should be all set and good to go. So let's start getting the relay mounted wired and then we can start working on the pump.
All right, we got all of our ends on for the relay. Now we just got to heat shrink it. We're gonna mock up, plug everything into our relay so that we can get everything sheathed and ran and looking decent. So we've got our ground wire coming from the ECU. We're gonna be putting that on pin 86. Then we've got a smaller power wire going to our battery lead. This is gonna be the one that activates the relay along with our ground coming from the ECU. We're gonna put that one on 86 or 85. Those two are gonna be on 85 and 86. Doesn't really matter which way. Once the ECU gives it ground, it'll activate this relay. Then same thing with these two. Doesn't really matter the orientation, but for our relay, we're gonna do 30 and 87. Now you guys totally can buy the pigtail for this. It plugs right into a relay and it gives you all the wire leads and then you splice into those. I've used them plenty for hot wire kits on fuel pumps, but keeping this thing as cheap as possible, I just used some ends that we had for connectors and made our own little pigtail with the covered connector so they can't touch each other or anything. And that's gonna work perfectly fine for us. So we've got all of our wires ran here and I put some heat shrink on it before we put all this together just so that we could try to get this to look halfway decent. Now, I don't want it too close to the relay so that it's keeping a bunch of tension on it or going to make it a pain to plug in or unplug our wiring in the future. So I'm going to leave just a little bit like that and put this heat shrink on it right about there. We'll heat that up. That'll keep it looking decent and make it easier if we want to put some of this loom on it. So let's go ahead and get that heat trunk, get the relay mounted, and we can start running our power wire over to our pump. All right, so we've got that looking pretty decent, our little harness for the relay. Now we can go ahead, get the wires fed through, get the relay mounted, and start running the wire for our pump. So we got that relay mounted down in here with the pigtail that we made, got the wires ran and hooked up to battery power right here. I decided to go there because it'll get covered with the fuse box cover. And then the hot wire that is going through the relay that's gonna come out to power a pump, I ran along here. I already had some ugly wires there anyways that I've been meaning to loom, haven't had time. So I just ran it along with those so if I ever get around to it, I can. Had it come out all the way over here where you can see this wire and we ran it along here and now I'm just gonna feed it down by the washer tank. We'll come out down bottom by where the pump is. Then I'll show you guys what we're working with and how we're gonna connect to the pump. So I don't know how well you guys can see that, but that's our washer tank, that's our pump. And I already got it unplugged and it has two terminals up top that look very similar to our relay. So we should be able to use the same terminal ends on our wires, run a power from the relay and then we'll run a ground to chassis ground so we should be able to control this with the ecu so let's get some connectors down here get this thing wired up and test it So I made some quick test leads for it and I have them hooked to my power probe and then I just took our washer hose which is right here and stuck it into this bottle that you guys can see. Now we're just going to go ahead and power this pump up for a second or two and see what happens. Alright so it works perfectly fine like that. It actually seems like it has a decent little bit of flow and pressure to it. But I'm going to hook it up in reverse just for curiosity. All right, so we, we hook it up that way, it actually flows a lot less. And if we hook it up this way, it seems like it flows with a lot more pressure. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Let's get some terminals, get our wires ran, and get this thing hooked up. So we made ourselves a ground lead to go down to the pump, and I'm gonna go right here to this chassis ground. I just made this new ground the other day and cleaned this spot off, so I think it's gonna be a perfectly fine ground for us.
not sure how well you guys can see it but we've got our new wires ran to the pump got everything zip tied up and out of the way so now we can start working on plumbing this thing in so i'm gonna get this wheel well back in and we will start working on getting some nozzles mounted so now that we've got our relay and our pump all wired up i'm gonna go ahead and tap into our washer line here i'm gonna tee into this one that's coming right up from the pump instead of taking it off at the pump and we're gonna adapt over from that into our quick connect lines that i use i use them for things like the blow off valve and I use them on the meth system for the GTO as well. It's always worked out good. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll use a union so that I can adapt over to a quick connect. And then we will run a line over to here. And I think I'm gonna make a bracket off of this bolt here that's gonna come over and down and we'll put our nozzle in that and spray directly into the turbo. So let's go in the garage. I'll get some nozzles out and we'll start mocking up what we need to make. Now that we're in the garage, I've got some stuff laid out that we're gonna be using found this piece of scrap aluminum in our pile and i'm going to use that to make our bracket we'll make a 90 coming off of that radiator support bolt it down and then i might do a bolt in this so that it's adjustable if we need to move it a little bit um, i also might just make it one solid piece with a 90 and then drill a hole in it for our nozzle so these are the nozzles that we're going to be using they are like a water sprayer basically but they work great for water methanol systems i've used them a few times these black ones are three gallon per hour and then these blue ones are 1.5 gallon per hour we're going to start with a single blue one before the turbo and then if we need to we can always just swap it out for a three gallon so we're going to be using the hard plastic line it's a quick push connect style line that uses these fittings you just push it in it locks and then to release you just push down on this and pull it out and these are eighth inch npt so we've got a couple different union styles here a 90 and then the straight that we're going to be using to adapt over to these fittings so that everything from that single connection with the barb is going to be nice and clean and push to connect instead of having to use the barbs with a hose clamp so let's cut a piece of metal start bending it up take some measurements and get our nozzle mounted <laughs> All right, guys, so we got our bracket assembled and made there. We've got some fittings on it so that we have our nozzle right here, about four inches from the blade of the turbo with our push lock line ran along here, up into here. And then this push connect fittings that we made work right here was just so we could go to a rubber hose because that's what that washer pump is. Not the prettiest thing, but this is what we had laying around. I'd like to get a check valve in here so it doesn't have to prime this whole line and for if we ever try to add another nozzle in the actual charge piping. But for now, this is gonna work perfectly fine. As you can see, it worked out pretty good with our little bracket there. So let's go ahead, get set up, and try triggering this stuff with the Honda and see if it's gonna work. Now that we've got everything wired and plumbed in, let's go ahead, grab the laptop, start this thing up, and see if we can't get this thing to spray using the Honda. I've got a light sitting here, so hopefully you guys can see the mist. So let's give it a shot. It 
it does seem to be spraying. So let's go ahead, set up some parameters, take it for a ride and see what it does. So before we go take this thing for a ride and test out the methanol system, I just wanna show you guys some of the settings that we have set up here. So as you know, for input, we have it set to always on. And I did check the box for disable on full throttle shifts and launch control because we don't want it to be spraying when we hit two step or anything like that. So our output hasn't changed, A15, the air conditioning clutch output. Conditions, we have the minimum engine speed at 3,500 RPM. Maximum, I went over what our red line's at, so 8,000. Engine load, I have set to PSI. We have it start spraying at three PSI and continue to spray, so I just set it at 50 because with our combo, we won't hit 50 PSI unless our rods are getting kicked out of this thing. For throttle percent, it's only gonna spray over 40% throttle. Vehicle speed I have set at zero, uh, all the way to maxed out. Air temperature and water temp I have as low as they will go pretty much because I always want it to spray and I don't beat on it when it's cold. Then for fuel and ignitions tab, I haven't messed with timing at all. We might go ahead and just throw half a degree in there, but I probably leave that until we get some time to go play on the dyno. Now with water methanol or straight methanol, you do want to add timing on the dyno so you can see what your changes are doing because that's where you're going to get your performance gain. You could actually lose power just by throwing water methanol on a car without tuning for it. If you don't pull away fuel and you don't add timing, you very well could lose power. But for now, we're just gonna pull fuel. So since we have it start spraying at 3,500 and I don't think our system is instant full spray, at 3,500, I have it pulling a value of negative 25. And then from 4,000 RPM all the way to 8,000 RPM, again, past our red line, I have it pulling a fuel value of negative 65. And then for our ignition compensation, right now it is full zeroed. I might have it add half a degree, but I'll let you guys know if I do. So let's go head out to the car, get ready to take this thing for a ride. Now that we've gone over the changes I've made to the tune file, I wanna quickly touch on what we're gonna be running in our washer tank, since that is our water meth reservoir. As you can see, I've got a bottle of Boost Juice here by Snow Performance. That's what we run in the GTO in our super nice setup. I have a few gallons of that sitting inside on the shelf, but to keep with the theme of this project, I wanna keep it super cheap and super simple. So I wanna show you guys just how well other options can work so we've got some isopropyl alcohol here from cvs it's 91 percent isopropyl alcohol rubbing alcohol and we have about that much washer fluid left in that tank that i forgot to drain before we set our system up not really worried about it i've already dumped all of that bottle in here but i just want to show you guys that we will go ahead and top it off real quick like i said local cvs picked up some isopropyl alcohol and we will just top off our tank before we go take this thing for a ride. Might have to open up that other bottle real quick. Go ahead and get that one opened up. See if I can do this without spilling it all. And as you can see, it's filled right up to the top. So that's what we're gonna be spraying, the isopropyl alcohol. So let's go ahead and get this thing fired up, let it warm up, and we'll go take it for a ride and try this meth system out. So we've let this thing warm up. We're gonna go ahead, take it for a ride and test the system, make sure that it is spraying. We should be able to see it in the AFRs. I did pull fuel out like I had mentioned, but we should still see a changeover when this thing starts to spray. So let's take this thing for a ride and see what it does. did turn the boost controller up just a tiny bit so we might have to get out of it if uh, this thing starts making too much boost hey there's a cyber truck
the boost. AFR actually didn't look too bad. It's definitely spraying even with the fuel pulling out uh, we could probably pull a little bit more so that's a good sign everything does seem to be working let's head back to the house take a quick look at the logs and check over our system make sure everything's good and let's go ahead and take a look at our data log all right so this was that last little one we did this one was the one before it, so we'll look at that one. So everything here in the data is telling me that our system is working. I have 65 units of fuel being pulled out of it, and we're still at 10.9 AFR. So I need to pull some more fuel out of this thing, and I'm sure I can put some timing into it and make a little bit more power or do it with boost. We do only have that pre-turbo nozzle right now. If we put a post-turbo nozzle on it, I'm sure that would come down but I don't know how much of that would be from the sensor getting wet from the water methanol. So I think we're gonna leave it with a single nozzle for now. It seems to really like it. I'm not gonna mess around with the timing until we get it back on the dyno and see where it's happy at, but I definitely think with the methanol, it will be happy with some more timing. So this is definitely telling us that our system is working, which is awesome to see. So as you guys could see, our system is definitely working and I couldn't be happier with it. I'm into this thing for next to nothing because I used everything that I had laying around. So this system really didn't cost me a dollar. I think you guys could replicate it for probably $20 or so. Do I recommend doing it the way that we did it in today's video? Not exactly. If you guys want to set up a water methanol kit the proper way, make sure to go back on the channel and check out the GTO playlist. We have a couple videos in there on water methanol injection, how we did it the proper way with LED warning lights and fail safes and things like that to keep the engine happy and safe. So make sure to go back and check those things out. But as always, I appreciate you guys for checking out today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and check us out on all of our other social media platforms, Facebook, TikTok, and Bought to Build Official on Instagram, and we will catch you on the next one.